groups as possible, whereas the McCain campaign seemed, uh, rightly or wrongly, to, to be whittling down the groups that they were appealing to. I, I think that's absolutely right. But remember how often uh, the, uh, the John McCain just did give a very generous uh, uh, valedictory there, I and mean, good for him, uh, and Sarah Penniman, how often they accused of Barack Obama of being the most liberal member of the Senate. This is going to be a liberal cabal, and it's going to be represent, you know, a very small, the elites of the country. This is not what this victory is about. It represents masses of Americans, and, and in a way that really sends a very different signal to everybody. Wait a minute, I got elected by the by much of the country, and I have strength in all sections of the country. Take a look at some of these numbers. He got 96% of the African American vote. This is off exit polls, the latest that we've had. 67% uh, of the Latino vote, 66% of the youth vote, 68% of the new voters voting, which made up 11% of the electorate. 68% of them. So there is definitely this message of inclusion that seemed to resonate. I agree that there is this issue of how do you appeal to everybody at all times? That's a bigger challenge when you're campaigning and promising things as as opposed to campaigning and uh, 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 being elected and then delivering things. But also, it's a symbol of a new America, the America of 2050, where minorities yeah, right. make up the majority in this country. That is the point in the census. Major minorities will be the minority, and the face of America is changing. It's not yeah. Joe the plumber. And, and in terms of his use of power, which he will have, believe me, he can go to members of Congress and say, you know what, I brought you here. You're going to owe me one. And he can go to conservatives that way, and he can go to liberals that way. And so in the end, he can become a conciliator. Yeah. Even though lots of people say he's a liberal, his nature is to be a conciliator. And I think he has a great opportunity to do that right now in the Congress. Start, he, has a, he, he has an opportunity tonight. The speech tonight now becomes very, very important. Mm -hmm. Because this is a moment when he shows how he's how It's he's not just about out. celebrating tonight, it's, it's celebrating. about looking forward. It's looking forward. And it's, I, I think it's, the Trump part, too, and it, particularly in Florida, when we're talking about Florida, e obviously the economic situation really dominated there because McCain sure. thought that the older voters were going to go his way. He didn't really think he was going to have to fight for the Florida in the way that he had to. And despite the older voters being in Florida, they were, as was mentioned before, hit by this economic situation with the housing situation. And then the other Trump, obviously, is that youth vote. Voter. Year after year, election after election, we always talk about the young people being ex in, in energized and inspired and getting out, and then they never turn up or they never turn out. Well, this is the election. This was the year they did actually turn out, and it was in Obama's favor. Also, for the first time in Florida, a Democrat won a majority of the Latino vote. Talking about that generation. I mean, that is, Matt, Matt Barreto has been sending emails all night talking about how critical that is. Uh, and when, when Bill was here earlier, we were talking about this whole this shift. What you're seeing is California, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada. You're seeing it, not necessarily in Texas, Florida. Um, this whole new coalition, uh, Democrats don't have to rely on 45, 50% in terms of white voters, in terms of the whole coalition. And so, you know, how they run campaigns, Obama has shown even how that changes the kind of campaigns you're going to see over the next four years in terms of how they do the whole outreach. And so, I think from a Republican standpoint, how Bush did so well in 2004 with Hispanics, I mean, they, you know, they have a serious issue now as to how they position this party to win elections going forward. This is like going come forward. to Jesus for the Republican Party, well, certainly, Jesus, in many ways. Jesus. Well, well, I mean, and so many, on so many the levels. The one Jesus. On so many levels, um, I, I've got to believe, and I've written on this, that that this is really an eye-opener for the Republican Party, and it does have to reevaluate and reassess, and I believe it will, in so many, in ways as it relates to the conservatism, the moderate message, the moderates within the party, minorities. Um, I think that this conversation is something that has had to, has had to be had with the party starting back in 2006. The independent voters are so important in this election. Absolutely. McCain, when he was an independent, was running ahead of the Republican brand. When he became more of a tax and spend old-fashioned Republican, and maybe my Republican friends would argue <laughs> with me about this, he didn't he didn't do as well. And so, you know, now I think with the new president, we have in Barack Obama, it's like a great national raw shock test. <laughs> you look at him, and what do you see? And to the liberals, they might see a liberal. Right. And to the moderates, you might see a moderate. We just don't know <laughs> wait, wait, what get, it's going to be. Getting emails, the African American seen African American. I'm getting emails from whites who say, "Yeah, but he's also half white." Exactly. I mean, the bottom line Total is, I mean, the guy is. This is why he's again. He has to represent all of America. There's a lot oh, we can be inspired okay. by, but he's the president for all of America. No no president-elect no Obama is on site in the location at Grand Park. Uh, we are, of course, going to bring you his comments live. We're going to take a short break. 
When we come back, most likely Barack Obama. Tell me something. Why does my company have so many printers? Every time I turn around, there's another one wasting electricity, waiting for a print job, not to mention the stockpile of supplies. Give me one machine with outstanding productivity and functionality. With an LCD panel from Sharp that lets me preview scan documents. Plus an inner finisher that doesn't waste space. While you're at it, how about a sleek design? The Frontier Series from Sharp. Work without limits. In the world of personal finance, it's Mass Mutual. Ask your advisor or visit MassMutual.com. Oh, this is interesting. Hey, Bob. Hey, Greg. I think we have a little competition. What do you say we move forward with that new data center like we did with the LA Ox? Sure, Greg. We can customize your blade servers with the same software and security we discussed yesterday. Right, so I just plug in and I'm good to go. Yeah, pretty much. You know what I call that? Sweet. Turning new technology into your technology, CDW is there with the customized solutions you need. Oh, look at this. Bring it on. Nice flight, Captain. When this 250-ton aircraft touches down at 155 miles per hour, I know what I can rely on. These tires for a smooth and safe landing. Bridgestone Tires in Aviation. Bridgestone. 900 die. A few survive. Soledad O'Brien with the untold stories. Escape from Jonestown. CNN Thursday, November 13th. If you're real. Do you know which home appliances are your big energy users? The electric water heater is one. Save by taking shorter showers or installing a solar water heating system. The energy to light your home can really add up. Switch every bulb to CFLs for big savings. A second refrigerator can be a huge load on your system. If you need it, keep it out of the sun and replace it with an Energy Star refrigerator. For more energy saving tips, visit hawaiisenergyfuture.com. This is a chair, but a digital phone service from Time Warner Cable, and it travels to your parents' living room one minute. <laughs> your friend's kitchen the next. And you're saving money on every trip with one easy bill that has popular calling features included at no extra charge. So keep moving at the speed of sound. Hey there. And save money along the way. Order Oceanic Home Phone Service and get two months free. Oceanic Time Warner Cable, the power of you. Slash heroes. Do you have a call in number for Oprah? All right, we got some live pictures coming in from the White House. I want you to, uh, to take a look at this. This is right outside the White House on Pennsylvania Avenue. Lots of folks in Washington, D.C. have just come over there to celebrate, to celebrate the election of Barack Obama as the 44th president of the United States. Uh, Campbell, uh, you know, uh, both of us are former White House correspondents. We know that yep. area quite well. This is sort of just a spontaneous reaction, and we're seeing this all over the country. I know. We've been hearing anecdotally stories uh, from friends and family here in New York City. People are out in the streets in Times Square, in Harlem, in various neighborhoods in New York, and clearly we're seeing it in Washington as well, celebrating tonight. It's yes. like it's New Year's Eve. Celebrating all over the country, uh, a moment that a lot of people never thought they would see, but they're seeing it right now. I know you have a very special guest uh, you want to talk we to. do we want to take you to Atlanta to the Ebenezer Baptist Church we have the youngest daughter joining us of Martin Luther King jr. Uh, Bernice King joining us right now and Bernice just give me a sense of what this night what this moment means to you you know it, it means to me that the work that my mother and father sacrificed for uh, was not in vain and uh, I'm so honored just to be connected to their work life It's a new song. 
hear the celebration happening there, obviously. Um, where you are, it's extremely loud. But give me a sense for how you believe Barack Obama has said he's going to bring this country together after an election that was this um, difficult, this tough, this nasty at times, so polarizing. How does he bring people together now? Hello? All right, I, I think we're losing our Bernice King joining us there. You can hear a loud, um, extremely exuberant celebration at the Ebenezer Baptist Church down in Atlanta. Bernice, we want to thank you very much for uh, being with us for the second and throw it now to Anderson. Thanks very much. We're told we're within two minutes of Barack Obama uh, talking to the crowds at Grand Park. Of course, uh, you can see right now the crowds are there. Clearly, they know he is there as well. They are waiting to hear uh, from the president-elect. David Gergen, you're saying in terms of what Barack Obama is likely to speak about tonight, it's not just a night of celebration. It's, it's, it's a time to look forward. It's a time to talk already about governing. I, I think they have designed this, as I understand it from the Obama team, they want to get off to a very fast start. They want to open their transition office tomorrow at noon. He's going to go to a press conference They're going to open tomorrow. their transition office tomorrow. Tomorrow at noon is what I understand. That's what they're, they were planning. Uh, he wants to name his new chief of staff tomorrow if possible. He wants to name his transition chief. He wants to get moving very quickly. He's always looked forward to this moment when he can make the transition to governing. That's what no really uh, is in the court. And so I think he wants, right? I mean, I've already gotten a copy of an email he's now sent out to all his supporters saying, you're great, you're terrific, thank you for your passion, all your support, and I'm going to be back to you soon about what we need to do next. Right. He's going to govern that I mean, way. He's going to govern that way. He's going to draw upon this internet to to mobilize these these hundreds of thousands of people. And, and in terms of transition, I mean, this is a, a campaign that has planned everything, and they have planned the transition <laughs> right. since last May, since before he was the nominee, very early on, started since last May, and when he went to uh, visit his grandmother for the last time in Hawaii, he took along with him a large transition memo right. that he read on the airplane because they were well along the way in planning their government, as it should be, by the way. But it can't, it can't all be, let me talk to you about politics, folks. No. It's going no, no, to be, no, not he is a symbol of so much to so many. And while things do not change overnight, clearly, right. for African Americans and minorities in this country, it is a symbol to so many people of, who have waited a long time and also a symbol to a new generation, a bridge, literally. Oh. We're, we're, we're told we're just a few seconds away. Let's listen in to what the crowds there are listening to as we await the arrival on stage of President-elect Barack Obama.